Hello and welcome back to the board, I'm the Gav Major, and this is a let's play in the Russian legendary tier cruiser, the Stalingrad. Although, uh, here's a Stalingrad, that's a Valorivistok, and I'm actually bigger than a Valorivistok. Um, so, <coughs> cruiser is the uh, best way to pronounce that one. Um, so this is obviously a legendary tier and tier 7 game of domination on shards. And uh, once we've gone unspotted, I will... in Endeavour to show you the shipping forecast. So, shipping forecast we have Love Fantastic, Karaboska, Shimikaze, Sieg Freak, Alaska, Odin, Iowa, Yamato, Yamato. Two Yamatos are most certainly uh, of concern. It's going to just preempt, just because I know the Karaboska is in the area and uh, he's saying he's spotted. Um, that means whatever spotting him is probably in the area, so that's why I turned on the radar to try and light up the Shimikaze there. Hoping our Karabos can get away with this live. And unfortunately, due to the joys of the radar on the Stalingrad, yes, it is very scary for a destroyer to be detected by it if there's someone else who can do the shooting uh, because the uh, Stalingrad is only ever going to be able to get one volley off on target which is a bit of a shame unfortunately we've lost our friendly Karabosk and so the chances of us being successful on this flank are pretty scarce I guess you can say although what I might do I might see if I can try and keep the uh, Valavistok within my legendary uh, trait proximity and that should allow me to reload my uh, radar a lot quicker so that's what we're going to be aiming for there we also have the Yamato again a ship that I'm not super wow, super keen on coming up against the reason why I say that is because the armor scheme of the Stalingrad so when it comes to the Stalingrad she has a 32 millimeter bow and stern which is very advantageous for bow tanking 16 inch gun battleships how Ever. Um, it does mean that you can be overmatched in the nose by a Yamato. However, your belt armor is sufficient to uh, ricochet the, uh, the shells of the Yamato should that be necessary. So, in that regard, it's not uh, it's not all bad news, I guess you could say. With the radar loaded in 36 seconds, I don't necessarily want to come racing around the corner until. I am completely ready to engage the Shimkaze. Now, obviously, um, downsides of coming up against a destroyer in the Stalingrad. Yes, your radar is only going to last for uh, 20 seconds, and that's practically the reload time. But further more to that is obviously the downsides of not having HE not having sonar so I'm going to wander into at least one of these torpedoes and there she is can we get another don't think that's gonna be enough We are in a very, very strange position. We have an enemy Alaska behind us. Uh, obviously the lack of torpedoes has been an absolute joy. Okay. Aim for those cheeks and the Yamato, see what we can yield there. Well, 10,000, not bad. We're angling because obviously we want to be offering our belt against the Yamato to improve our survivability. Alaska finding a nasty mark on us. Enemy Shimikaze, I believe, is now gone. However, that has not stopped the torpedoes. Yamato is now gone. Gonna aim for the superstructure and see what we can do against the Alaska. 10,000. 
tucking it back in. Gonna swing it back out now. Try and tuck it back in before he can make contact with that. Even though we have that armor scheme, that is still painful, but we should reload before he does. And even though the Battle of Stock should finish her off. Oh, we have managed to seal the deal. Oh, that is what you call a knife fight. Uh, we are going to try and uh, A, heal up a bit, B, grab this cap. Uh, this Karabosk is in line of sight, so we might see if we can... Don't think we will. Odin's just going behind the iron. So, yeah, back to the Karabosk. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, anticipate a brutal turn, maybe? There's one thing I'll keep finding with Stalingrad. Why turret just seems to be... It seems to show that she's ready uh, before she actually is. Uh, there seems to be just this, this final amount where sometimes she glitches out, uh, which can be a little bit awkward. Uh, can I don't think we can catch the broadside of the Odin as yet, but hopefully with what limited HP we have left, maybe we can see what we can do against the rest of the enemy team. Now the Odin's got 12 inch guns, so I haven't really got too much to be concerned about there. So I find with the Stalingrad Ground she, uh, she hits hard um, if given the opportunity. Hopefully our gun should reload before that happens. Yeah, nice 7,000 there. Now she does have quite a broad stance in order to bring wide turret out. That was nice 7,000 there. Oh, there goes the Odin. Mm, can't quite reach around the will reach over the island so I'm gonna tuck it in. I were 16 inch guns so I can bow tank or at least I should be okay to do so so I'm gonna turn in maybe even angle it a little bit here and just try and just increase the time or decrease the time in which it will be until I actually get direct line of sight onto the Iowa. Valerie stock still with me interesting Yeah, the broad side of the Iowa. There's a uh, 16,000. And the brass dock behind me now opens fire. This could be the end of the Iowa. She's fired her 16 inch guns at me on the front, and that's all bounced. So I will most certainly uh, push through with these chaps and see if I can use my radar for some good so yeah the radar 11.7 kilometers range only 20 second duration that's the that's the big kicker uh, also i guess uh, you're very blappable in the starting ground if you get caught broadside on and the ap uh, doesn't give you the um diversity i guess you could say or the potential ability to switch your ammunition type um, you're very opportunistic with your shots and you're going to have to locate your shots in places where your AP is going to hurt whether that's on the broadside parts of ships or whether that's on the superstructure in this case with the uh, Sieg 3 closing in we're going to be going for a superstructure getting about 6,000 out of that Sieg 3, 15 inch guns so again we're not too concerned here She's now offering us a big broadside, so let's see if we can actually wrap up a target for a change. But the uh, RNG says no. A 
cheeky friend in the Karabosk there. But there's not really any incentive to really chase after him. Not unless the Kagero wants to go get himself into a gunfight, which I, I doubt the Kagero wants to do. Thankfully, the, uh, the Karabos does have quite thick armour for a destroyer, so there's actually potential for my AP shells to actually arm uh, when hitting the target in this case. Only uh, having 11 inch guns in this uh, cruiser. Um, it's not too bad, I guess. Especially when you're equipped with only armor piercing, it kind of means that um, you can do some heavy lifting if required. Really sure what the Karabosk's grand intention is here. Is he going to try and sneak up along the island to uh, get a close in attack, maybe? No, he's not moving radar range. turns away. And we say no to fire. So that's going to be about it for this game. There Karabosk is quite content uh, running for the back of the map. So we might as well just uh, congratulate ourselves on a good game. Um, and do a little bit of a toot in the horn. Um, because no, Karabosk is not going to be able to do anything, uh, apart from just be a mild irritant, uh, which isn't really much of a concern for us. Uh, in fact, we could actually probably actively just sail away. Um, so again, this is one of those scenarios where uh, if you're on the enemy destroyer, or the last one on your team, um, sometimes for the good of the game, maybe just hand yourself over, call it quits, because um, you're just dragging it out for everyone. So uh, we can uh, make a move out of here. There's uh, no point chasing him down. Oh, he decides to show himself. Yeah, I suspect he turned away. There you go, there he goes. Oh no, he turned in. And he also slowed down. Well, we'll take it that he's handed himself in, maybe. Accelerate. Yeah, I think that's going to be all she's wrote. I don't think we're going to be able to uh, seal the deal on the Karabosk. Even with all this lovely range. But there we go, winning on points. So yeah, the Stalingrad for 2 million XP, a bit pricey, but if you end up with 2 million XP kicking around then she's potentially worthwhile. Uh, she does seem to be a good ship, obviously the downside being um, a large citadel which is very high in the water when you're broadside on, no high explosive shells so your diversity in regards to what targets you can engage can be a little bit awkward at times and uh, no torpedoes so you have no close in point defense uh, upsides um maneuverability seems all right depending how you spec her the ap is very good ap um when it works i guess you could say dispersion is acceptable i guess you could say it's not great uh, but it's not horrendous either um concealment wise well she's got a long range uh, so she hasn't got great concealment uh, is the best way to put that one um, so she is a good ship is my, in my opinion I just kind of think she's not the right ship 
for the game at the moment. Uh, my issue with Legendary Tier is we have too many battleships, a Yamato Conqueror Grosser Curvest. We have too many of these battle cruisers with the uh, Stalingrad and the Alaska. We have too many destroyers with Kleber, Shimakaze, Karabosk and Gearing. And we only have one cruiser, the Worcester. And really, she's an AA cruiser, so not necessarily adding much diversity to the game. So I kind of find at the moment, uh, Legendary here, uh, there's a lot of this like destroyers uh, versus battleships kind of battle. Uh, there isn't really much of a battleships versus destroyer kind of battle. I mean, obviously, it doesn't mean you can't kill a destroyer in a battleship, but it kind of means that you haven't really got the tools. Um, Stalingrad is not bringing any anti destroyer tools. Uh, she's bringing a 20 second radar, which does have a decent range, but she has no actual capability to engage that destroyer herself. Uh, furthermore, she can't really protect herself against destroyers. Um, so again, she's she's just adding to the more prey for the destroyers kind of side of it. We've only really got one actual anti-destroyer ship being the Worcester, but the problem is um, by there only being one of that type, um, not everyone's obviously got her, and not everyone wants to play her. Um, so the lack of diversity of that intermediate cruiser uh, between the destroyers and the uh, crew and the battleships which can actually engage the destroyers is just not existing at the moment and i think obviously that is something that really does need to be fixed uh 95,000 damage in the stalingrad 61 hits on target two fires from my secondaries which got 37 hits that's when the alaska did the drive by and we both managed to not ram each other and actually survive on that one um getting one incapacitation to detected ribbons going to the team screen coming top the uh, second round the best legendary ship uh the second best on the team or i guess you could potentially say i'm also the eighth uh, worst on my team is a, a nice way to put it as well um so not doing too badly in that regard and then walking away with a total profit of 154,000 credits with a premium count and an epic credit booster so as i always say legendary tier is not there to make money and at the same time for me it's not there to have fun um so it just seems to be a bolt onto the game that personally i find no enjoyment in um even in the Stalingrad, um, I can have some generally alright games. I'd say that that was probably just a generally alright game. But I'm not exactly thrilled about my uh, end result there, even though uh, I seem to do alright on the team. And that just seems to be legendary tier all over. Um, but yeah, that's just some personal opinions and some discussion regarding legendary and then let's play in the styling grad which i hope you did enjoy if you did feel free to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy this content content feel free to subscribe down in the description email just channel for your game captures and the link to patreon if you want to support the channel on patreon as it is a non monetized channel now even though they do say these ships are premium ships uh they aren't really and they are subject to change um and the starting grad is definitely subject to change so uh, bear that in mind uh, before you go throwing global xp at her as well um, unlike a premium ship where um, any direct where wargaming doesn't like doing direct changes to the ship um, unless they really have to um, with the starting grad she's not classified as a premium ship so uh, she is subject to change and so um, if you do decide to spend the balloons to convert global xp into and into then uh, purchasing her uh, bear that in mind she's not classified as a true premium unfortunately well all in all quite happy so i'll let you go until next time i'm the gaff major and back to the port hey hey the other way here comes the galloping major bumpity, 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 bumpity. here comes the galloping major bumpity, bumpity, bumpity. get out of the way there you fellows unless you want me to run you down 